Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And I'm so excited to have Lisa Fisher with us. I almost said, I almost said, I'm happy to have Lisa Fisher said on the podcast. Because that's who I am. (laughs) It's because her website is so popular and people know about it so much. And people always say like, well, Lisa Fisher said, Lisa Fisher said, and that's that's why you do it. Because Lisa Fisher (laughs) said, exactly. (laughs) So it's Lisa Fishers with us. So welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. I love what you do. I love that you uh, rally the troops, whether it's real estate, whether it's health. I think that all of us need um, that lone voice that we can connect to, that though it's not what everyone else is saying, because what I say isn't what... um, a lot of what other people say, but I've done the research on my things. And I know you've done that with your intermittent fasting. And I know in your business, you're a trailblazer. So we need to keep uh, hanging the banner high of what we think is important. Well, and I think, you know, it's funny because I just did, I have another podcast that I do. It's called Real Life Leadership. And we just aired an episode that is going to be really good, but he talked about mindset and how each one of us have these subconscious things that are really holding us back. And one of the things is, is that you can have kind of, you know, if you look at like health and then you look at career and then you look at relationships, there's people who go, well, I can have good health But if I want good health, then I probably am not going to have a thriving career or, you know, I need to, you know, just be a stay at home mom so I can build those relationships with my kids. And the truth of the matter is that's a limiting belief because the truth is you can have great health. You can have a great career and you can have great relationships, but sometimes people kind of hold themselves back thinking that they can only have one or two of them, they can't have all three. I actually think health is the catalyst that we're seeing because of good health. I'm able at my age, you know, I'm a hundred, I look good for a (laughs) hundred, but at my age, I'll be 60 in just a few months. Um, At my age, I'm doing more. I have more energy. I feel my best. And that in turn has benefited Um, the businesses that I run, um, I've been in media for a really long time, still a journalist. Now I'm a certified health coach. And that has then pushed over and made my relationship really good with my husband. Because you know what, with my good health, I have so much energy. We are empty nesters. It is the most fun. Empty nesting is dating but with money, because, you know, when you were dating, you didn't have any money, you know, so we are now at a season of our, in our lives where our kids are gone financially, but we have really good relationships with them. So I would say the catalyst to that was my health, because 20 years ago, my thyroid was dying. I was homeschooling my kids. I was barely hanging on and I couldn't do it. I, I was a stay at home mom and that I homeschooled, but I still was on the radio every morning because I could be home by 9 a.m., right? And I still did TV, but there were so many times I had to say, I I can't do it because I didn't have the word recall because of my health. So the health is really what is the trajectory for me. And I think for so many people, and they put their health on the back burner because for one thing, it sounds expensive. It sounds time, it takes a lot of time. And I know now that my health pursuit I can do for the low, low price of free, getting free sunlight every day, getting free sunlight during the day, not just in the morning at night. Um, Intermittent fasting doesn't cost you a penny. Um, Eating, I eat a meat-based diet. It's much cheaper than buying the crap on the inside of the grocery store. So you see, health is the catalyst for so many things we do until our health's in order. We're not going to thrive. I want you to talk about your intermittent fasting experience and kind of what that looked like before and how you can kind of change your eating windows. So sometimes it might be a four hour window. Sometimes it might be a six hour eating window. Talk about how you kind of have done some things in the past and what you're doing now. Yeah, I would say it's really fluid with intermittent fasting because the other thing we do as intermittent fasters or people in this health space is we lean in 
and we listen to our bodies. And so our bodies change. We have uh, hormonal changes with uh, things, a part of a cycle, whether it's a menstrual cycle or a life cycle that changed. So I started in 2017. I'm still on the radio. So that meant I was getting up at about 3.45 a.m. And I just had kind of a different day than I have now. Now I sleep until six. Yeah, I'm such a loser. But that kind of, you know, gave me the, I had the excuse in my mind, I have to eat because breakfast we thought was the most important meal of the day. And the most important meal of the day is is when you break your fast, but some days mine might not be till 4 p.m. So I started with a 18 and six window just because that's what my son told me to do. And he's the first person that introduced it to me. And he told me on a scientific level because he's an engineer. So he was thinking in that regard. So I did 18 and six. I did 18 and six a long time. I dropped the 10 or 15 pounds easily that my body was holding on to. I was likely insulin resistant. No one knew because I wasn't testing that now. Everyone needs to have their fasting insulin tested. Don't come back with, don't come at me with your uh, A1C. Don't come at me with your glucose. I need to know, and you need to know what your fasting insulin is because it has a 10 to 12 year predictability on the future of your health. So I started with the six hour window and then um, I did a five day fast back in July of this year because I had a colonoscopy and the doctor just by looking, it shows no one knows if you have cancer until it goes through pathology. But just by looking, he thought it was a pre-adenoma, a pre-cancerous adenoma. Um, it was not. But while I was there, I'd already done a two day fast to get to the colonoscopy in the upper GI. I was like, I'll just rip the Band-Aid off and do a five-day fast because we know five-day fast are therapeutic. Dr. Jason Fung and other leaders, thought leaders in that field can attest to that. So then right after that, Chantel, is when I introduced um, a meat-based diet into my life. And I did it to... So we're all needing, everybody listening needs to lower their inflammation because we know inflammation is what spawns cancer and cardiovascular disease. So it's finding the root cause, right? The root cause. So for me, what was the root cause with all this vitiligo I have all over my body? What is the root cause? Could be gut health. It could be gluten, all these things. So with a carnivore diet or a meat-based diet, meaning I do eat avocados and they're not from an animal. Um, I can't really think of much else, but uh, you know, I might have I can't even think, but I do have raw dairy, raw yogurt, um, and I have beef, beef and bacon and butter. I am the woman of Chris Fisher's dreams. He comes home and says, what are we having? I go beef, bacon and butter. He says, okay. <laughs> so I started that and guess what? My inflammation, I had um, old lady hip, bursitis in my hip, which is kind of common as we age and it's gone. It is completely gone now that I'm meat-based and I am, my face is repigmenting. Um, my little white spots. I haven't seen it yet on my arms. It's going to take a while, but you know, I have probably another 30 years on this planet. I, I'm okay. I'm not in a hurry. I can cover any of this with makeup when I do on camera stuff and I don't care about the other stuff. But so now my uh, schedule, I, I used to kind of do a 20 and four window. And now really I'm back to 18 and six because I'm having lunch and I'm having dinner. I'm having like a hamburger patty at lunch with cheese. And then at dinner, I'm having a steak. And I love it. And I never, never, never snack in between because when you have that much fat and protein in your life, you're, um, you have these satiety hormones that fire. Leptin is the one that, you know, we kind of all talk about. But there's also YY peptide and cholecystokinin. I mean, I know I'm in the weeds on this, but I know about it because I've done the research. They don't fire and tell you you're full <clears throat> until you've had fat and protein. <clears throat> you on a low fat diet, that's why you're always hungry. You're not eating things that are firing the satiety hormones that tell you you're satisfied. If you go low calorie, that's why you're always hungry. You have to have enough in order for those hormones. Dr. Fung says we're hormonally wired to eat and to stop eating. And you do that with the proper nutrition and that's the proper food on your fork. People on vegan diets, there's not enough fat and protein for you to feel satisfied. And that's why sometimes they, Dave Asprey, um, we can go on and on about all the people who have now followed carnivore that will say they felt the sickest they've ever been when they were eating a vegan diet. There's not enough satiety for one thing. 
So it is just so hard to overstate how important magnesium is for all aspects of our health. Everyone is talking about how critical magnesium is. And there is a long list of symptoms and diseases that can be eased or even treated with magnesium. So way back when, doctors used magnesium for all kinds of conditions like arrhythmia, constipation, preeclampsia, even seizures. And now it's kind of used as a last resort. It's absolutely essential to our health and our well-being. This is a huge problem because magnesium deficiency can increase your risk for all these different diseases. So I am really a big advocate of getting as many nutrients as we can through a well-balanced diet. Like that is super important. But I really feel like right now that food alone isn't going to work because our soil is so overworked and so mineral depleted that it's just lacking so much magnesium. Fortunately, Buy Optimizers has the solution. Their magnesium is the only one that has seven types of magnesium, and it's specially formulated to reach every tissue in your body. So go to magbreakthrough.com slash waste away. That's magbreakthrough.com slash waste away and get 10% off and use the code waste away to get your magnesium. Mm. Well, let's talk about hormones and let's talk about bioidentical hormones and kind of your routine. And obviously Lisa's really open about what she does. And obviously you need to either get on a call with her or get on a call with a functional medicine doctor and get a plan for you. So That's right. although she's going to be talking a little bit about what she does, it does help to hear like, here's what I'm doing. And it kind of triggers some things that you need to do. So what made you decide to get on bioidentical hormones and kind of talk about what you were feeling and what made you go, this is it, I've got to do it? Well, so we do have two options, bioidentical hormones or molecularly is identical to what your body produces. What you get from your provider, if your provider is not using BHRT and just using HRT, hormone replacement therapy, is horse urine. Premarin is Premarin is horse urine. And then there's Prempro and there's some other options. Well, I kind of knew I didn't want that. You know, I'm, I'm not the brightest bulb, but I knew I didn't want horse urine. So that was 15 years ago. And I was on the radio then. And so I was getting up um, at that time of day, like I said, at about, about 4 a.m., 345 or 4. All of a sudden, in my 40s, this is so typical. This will resonate with so many women. Started waking up at 3 a.m., wide awake. I would maybe empty my bladder, but wide awake, could not fall asleep, kind of heart racing, all these things. And so I would get up and I would go about my day. And I had a functional medicine um, nurse practitioner who specializes in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And I said, what do I do? And she said, oh, you're in your forties, your progesterone starting to take a dip on that second after that uh, the luteal phase, maybe, and that's when it is. It's after day 14. It starts to dip. You wake up at 3 a.m. And I said, well, I already get up at 4. It's not a big deal. And that provider said to me then, sleep is the most important gun in your toolkit, right? She said, sleep is so valuable. And if you skimp on sleep, you're going to have a whole host of problems. So she said, you do need that extra hour of sleep. So started doing progesterone, slept like a baby, wonderfully. How so, much progesterone were you taking? Now, in the very beginning, I probably started at about 100 because I was still menstruating when you're still cycling. And again, my attorney wanted me to tell you this is not medical advice. I'm telling you what I went through. And that's where you work with your provider, someone who is... Um, has some certification in bio T or whatever you choose to do. So I probably started a hundred um, because I've been through menopause and, you know, pre-menopause is those probably around 40 ish women are pre-menopausal where things are, where women will start saying, Oh my gosh, I'm bleeding like a stuck pig. The first day of my cycle, what is wrong? Now I would say, check your thyroid too. Because, you know, my I love the thyroid. Um, and then you'll just start noticing or you'll have 
short cycles, long cycles. This is where that provider told me a woman over 40 should never wear white pants ever again. She said, because that's when the woman who will say, well, I hadn't had a period in months. And there it comes. And it is a flood when it comes. So your cycle is so indicative of your endocrine health, of your mental health. These young girls that are doing things, stopping their cycle is very dangerous long term for their hormonal health. It's not a great idea. It's a difficult situation for them to be in wondering, I don't want pregnancy. What do I do? And that's where you talk to your uh, partner and you talk to your provider about that. So that was at about 100. I'm at 250 now. I'm at 250 now. And even I talked to a medical doctor yesterday who I partner with. He said, sometimes I even have some more than that. Sometimes women in their 50s will start having polyps and uh, I, I'm not going to have surgery for anything, you know, unless something has been severed. I, I'm keeping all my parts. So, so when you talk about the bioidentical hormones, are you talking about just a cream that you're putting on? Great question. There are several options. You can do transdermal cream. You can do vaginal suppositories. You can do um, pellets in your butt cheek, or you can do capsules. I've now graduated to the progesterone comes in a capsule. I've got a pharmacy here. In fact, I'll send you a link. People can get discounts for the testing um, saliva and the Dutch, uh, do you know about the Dutch test, the dried urine yes. test? Yeah. yeah. It's a real pain in the backside to take. Cause it's like, you're, you have to sit there and I think I can't remember. I've did it actually not too long ago, but it was like, okay, you have to make sure it's like, you don't drink too much water. You yeah. have to do it a certain number of hours mm -hmm. before bed. I mean, it's yeah. you know, got to like have a then saliva might be easier for some people. There are a couple of options, but um, the Cornerstone Compounding and Little Rock, I work with them on these things. So you can look at these different options. A lot of people say transdermal just doesn't do it for them. Transdermal is an option also for testosterone. Um, and then if you do pelleting therapy, you do estradiol and testosterone. I'm a super slow metabolizer, so I can't handle the testosterone. So it's different for everybody. And I do lift weights and I do get a lot of vitamin D. So my testosterone really is kind of not impressive, but it's not in the tank. So you're saying, so did you ever try? a cream and you said that didn't work for you? I did try probably 15 years ago, probably did a transdermal with uh, probably estradiol or whatever, however they would, whatever they're using and probably with progesterone, but it just wasn't enough for me. You know, I wanted a real punch. Yeah. And I will tell you this. I actually personally am doing at a compounded pharmacy, I'm doing progesterone. I just started taking a little bit of estrogen because my estrogen was in the tank and a low, very low dose of all three, just very, very low. And, but I went and got my, my, I did the, the Dutch test again and, and all of them were in the tank. They were still weren't good. So I think, and I'm worried about with the creams. I feel like it's very hard to get the exact same dosage because even with the little thing that they give you, the clicker, it, the little mm -hmm. clicker, it just, it, you, I feel like I'm getting different amounts each time. So I'm wondering if I do need to move to just taking all three with a pill instead. What was the reason why you chose to take it in pill form? Um, the progesterone in pill form, because I like the delivery of it. I went to pelleting at that point. That's not for everybody, you know, and then there are vaginal suppositories. The other thing you, we need to look at with you is um, what is your microbiome? What is your gut health like? You know, I would- Okay. So if your gut health is terrible, anything you have just leaches out into your bloodstream and it doesn't feed what needs to be fed. And that's an oversimplification, but that I want you to understand kind of the visual. So if you can work on your gut health, and that means uh, walking outside with no shoes, grounding, um, eating as much locally produced uh, meats and vegetables as you can, because it has the same uh, soil that your body needs. 
getting sunlight in the morning, getting sunlight during the day with no sunscreen, um, staying away from, you know, no diet sodas, no sodas, uh, yeah. no ibuprofen. You know, one thing that is kind of an aha for me, and and I've known it for so long, it's not an aha, but a friend of mine said to me, we were eating lunch and I finished before them and they were like, Chantel, I already eat fast. She's like, you eat your food so fast. She's like, she's like, you're one of the healthiest people I've ever met in my life. She's like, I don't even know any other human <laughs> that eat, you know, with all my routines, awesome. you know, I yeah. do the, the sauna and the cryotherapy and massage and, you know, just, I yeah. really take my health yeah. to a really big, it's a big part of my life and I'm constantly striving to get better. And she's like, I'm telling you, number one is your stress level because, you know, everything I'm doing for work is just ridiculous. But she's like, right after that, she's like, you inhale your food. She's like, I don't even know how you could get any nutrients in your body because you don't even chew. (laughs) There is something to chewing, but okay, now let's talk about your cortisol. Have you ever done a continuous glucose monitor, the CGM on the back of your arm? Yes, I have. I've done it for a long time. And my blood sugar levels are really good, actually. They're really, really good. Do you ever notice, though, that when you're under a lot of stress that you will see a glucose spike? A little bit, but honestly, my glucose numbers really stayed in like the 70s and 80s. Great, great, great. It's, my blood great. sugar levels are, are really, really good. Um, so that's that's really okay. good. Yeah. So you're at a crossroads now where you're deciding, do I take the next step? And the next step is, and I think you told me you had a provider in Virginia Beach or someplace that you could really communicate with. And so that's, that's really important and lay it out for him or her to say, this is where I am. And sometimes we say, test, don't guess, but we also know that those lab values are based on an aggregate population and you may not be a part of that. You know, that may not work for you. That's how I say about thyroid all the time. So that's where you might say, I think it's important for women to communicate and not when the doctor says, how you do and go, oh, fine. To say, no, in fact, I have a laundry list. Here it is. I'm constipated, cold. Um, I have no libido. You know, you pu- write all those things down. So that way we can match it. And and of course, still being respectful to whatever the reference range is and to your provider, but also to your body and your body may need more testosterone. And then because part of their, what they're doing, math is involved. They have to do a ratio of your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. We have to know these ratios. And that's why it's called estrogen dominance, though you may have low estrogen. Like I sometimes have to think now what? And it's the way that I guess we're expressing it. And I'm learning that's also if you're drinking alcohol and doing any of the pelleting therapy, any of the bioidentical therapy, you are producing um, a pathway you don't want. And it and it, the pathway is through estrone and you don't want that. So you kind of have to really read up on this. Your provider may not know everything. You've got the internet wherever you are because you're watching this on the internet and, and look up things like bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, functional medicine, because people are like-minded. Because I'll tell you this, we're in a battle. Uh, the FDA, no likey that you and I are giving our money to these compounding pharmacies because big pharma has been shoved out. Because mm-hmm. Premarin's dropped. It's dropped, except for women who go to their doctor. The doctor says, here, take this, and they leave. And they never ask a question. You should always ask questions, people. Never walk out of there. Never walk out of there without saying, what are the alternatives? And if your doctor fumbles and, and, and gets defensive, that's not the right provider for you. You have to find somebody who says, hey, that's a great question. Let's talk about your options. Because you have options. So let's talk about 
the hormone pellets, because I think hormone pellets are really big with testosterone for guys. I feel like that's, yes. Kind of, I want you to explain what hormone pellets are for those who don't know what those are and why you switched from hormone pellet therapy to taking it in pill form. Well, only progesterone can come in a capsule. I'm still on uh, pellet therapy now. If it stops working, then I will talk about my options. It's worked beautifully for me for years. Is, so, are you taking the pellet therapy for estrogen? Estrogen, I, oh, I cannot tolerate testosterone because um, I am a slow metabolizer. And though I was texting my husband during the day going, come home. I'm ready, mm -hmm. um, like a 16-year-old boy, but I had uh, cystic acne. And I do spend a lot of my time still on camera and I cannot have cystic acne. So, and I had, I did have a mustache and I had a little beard, but I could go in there and lift that car out in the driveway. I mean, I had so much energy and it gave me so much drive and ambition. So I'm trying other ways to produce my own testosterone by lifting heavy weights and increasing my vitamin D. So for men, men also, I, and I just saw a statistic yesterday about the average uh, testosterone level for a man in this day and age, y'all, is bad. And it's everything from the deodorant you use to even maybe the fluoride in your toothpaste. Don't use fluoride in your toothpaste. Stop believing that. You don't need fluoride. Uh, to the plastics that your food is in, to all the uh, chemicals you put on your body, to all these things are phytoestrogens or there. To the bang energy drinks, I will tell you, and the amount of caffeine that people are taking as well. Well, I am. I do have another uh, guest that's coming on in just a minute, so I do have to wrap up. But please, 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 let's do a part two of this because I'm. I we, love it. I we have not finished this conversation, and we really need to do a part two. Okay, so we'll do let's, that. Let's do so it, girl. Tell and, listeners. And let me tell yeah. you one thing. You are. Yeah. Loved. After I was on last time, I had so many kind comments from people who adore you. Oh, that's so you kind. you are their Oprah and they love you. So <laughs> yes, you can find me at lisafishersaid.com. My Instagram is obviously Lisa Fisher said my Facebook page. I have a podcast called the Lisa Fisher said podcast of several other podcasts, but the ones that I talk about with health and wellness, that's that's where they are. I, I want to partner with people. I meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's $125 for 50 minutes. And, you know, it may take a couple of times a month for three months. And then, but I can help you find maybe providers and people to work with you because I want anyone listening, I want you to feel better. Mm, I love that. And you are a, such a blessing. Everyone absolutely loved our sh your show last time. Oh, good. They That's nice. Thank it. you. So, I'm so excited to have you back and you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.